Hey, hey everyone. Uh, today I will talk about developing high performance Node.js add-ons with Rust and uh, APIs. And first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm the creator of the NAPRS, and I worked at Warsaw to to pack team, and bad dance, lead code, and team vision before. And uh, I'm now leading the Octopus team at a fine, uh, building the uh, local first cooperative infrastructure for developers. Uh, so recently, um, we we have heard. That uh, a lot of popular uh, front-end tools were, uh, are re rewriting with Rust, and they are all in the Node.js ecosystem. And in, uh, as you can see, uh, they are all choosing NAPRS, and what, what is NAPRS? First, uh, in, the, in simple terms, NAPRS is the uh, bridge between Rust and Node.js. And, and, uh, and as you can see, all the uh, mm, front-end tools uh, are performance-sensitive libraries, and they are choosing uh, Rust to uh, rewrite their uh, slower JavaScript components and replacing it with Rust. Um, and what's, what's the features uh, does NAPRS have? And, and uh, they cannot resist to choose it. Um, first of all, NAPRS uh, allows for uh, very concise syntax to turn a piece of uh, Rust code into a function that can be uh, directly called in in the Node.js and JavaScript. Um, compared to the other Node uh, API frameworks in Rust or other languages, uh, NAPRS does not uh, only gen generate a callable library and a binary, uh, but also generate a corresponding uh, DTS files for types, TypeScript projects. Uh, this is the first big advantage of using uh, NPRS. Uh, in the code example on the left, we can see uh, that with just a few lines of Rust codes, we can provide a functionality of Rust library UUID to uh, any Node.js caller. And mm, not, not only uh, it includes the function uh, of UUID V4, but it also uh, provides amazing performance uh, compared to the uh, crypto random UUID provided by Node.js itself. It's about uh, thir 13 times faster, uh, as you can see the screenshot on the right. So um, here is a more complex example. Uh, let's pretend we are building a bundler. Bundler, uh, we using NLPRS and and exposing uh, plugin uh, API to JavaScript here. Uh, the bundler function uh, takes a parameter called plugin here, uh, which accepts a string uh, passed by the uh, Bundler, uh, we will assume that this th string is the source code we want to process with, um, and the plugin uh, function returns a promise string types uh, here. And uh, let let's take a look uh, how NPRS handle uh, this situation uh, from the implementation of the plugins. Uh, we can see uh, that. That uh, there is uh, TS archetype is used to override the types automatically generated by NAPRS. This is because uh, the Rust type system is very uh, different with uh, Rust 
raster type system. So um, mm, NIPRs may not uh, be able to generate perfectly uh, TypeScript uh, types aut automatically. Uh, therefore, there are some uh, APIs to uh, uh, for developers, we can uh, declare more precise types um, using the APIs. Um, in the specific logic, we pretend that the code uh, is the is the source code that the bundler uh, needs to process and pass it uh, to the plugin uh, API. Um, the core, uh, the core async here uh, means that we are uh, async waiting the return value of the uh, plugin function, so uh, that we will not block the uh, execution of uh, JavaScript here. Um, the biggest magic here is. Um, the promise written from the uh, plugin can be uh, directly await in Rust, and and uh, and here we uh, await the value uh, from the promise and return it uh, to JavaScript side, just like um, bundle do. Uh, returning to the generated generated. Uh, DTS files from APIs, we can uh, see that the async fn in Rust uh, returned a promise value in JavaScript, which which means you can uh, also await the uh, async fn in JavaScript directly. Uh, okay, this is a, a simple. Uh, Example for a dumb bundle. So, uh, as we can see, we can um, call the bundle in JavaScript like this. Uh, here is a classical style Node.js uh, callback uh, for plugin API, uh, where the first argument represents whether an error is uh, happen here. And from the screenshot in the right, uh, once we uh, run the uh, JavaScript file, we can get the result from the bundler. Uh, here we uh, pretend, pretend we are transform our uh, source code with SWC here and, and uh, uh, process it uh, async. So uh, now that we have uh, learned about how to develop a NPRS module, uh, it's time to start thinking about how how to distribute it. In, tra in traditional native add-on solutions, uh, developers may use post-install scripts uh, for com uh, to to compile native code during the installation, uh, but or or download the pre-compiled binaries from CDN or uh, GitHub release. Uh, you may have uh, gone crazy dealing with the var various post-install scripts failures when using another uh, uh, native add-ons. Um, one of the best features of NAPRs is, is out-of-box um, pre-compiled and the distribution solution with zero uh, post-install scripts, uh, which is especially convenient for uh, GitHub Actions users. Of, of course, uh, APIs also uh, has other advantages, uh, such as compatible with uh, serverless environments, such as uh, Vercel or Netlify. Um, in terms of pre-compile, pre uh, NAPRS maintains a complex uh, tool chain that supports um, most of mainstream platforms on the market. Uh, in this big table, you can see uh, uh, which shows the NAPRS can pre-compile add-ons for 
a particular war um, platforms on which Node.js can run. Uh, in, ad, in, in addition to the multi-platform pre-compiled pre solutions uh, provided by GitHub Action, uh, NAPRS also um, offers cross-platform cross compilation uh, solutions for other CI platforms like Cycle CI or uh, GitLab CI. Um, you can use NAPRS CI to compile binaries uh, for the following platforms on uh, only on Linux and uh, Mac OS. And it's really easy to integrate into your own CI scripts and uh, uh, your work workflow. OK, um, up until now, we have been talking about the advantages of uh, using APRs. And, but but uh, if it had no drawback, uh, why haven't I rewritten all the packages on NPM using NPRS? So now I will discuss some of the trade-offs um, using NPRS or uh, similar technologies. Um, it's including the following points. Uh, the first is cross-boundary uh, overhead. Uh, we all know the Rust is very fast language compared to JavaScript. But uh, you may not know uh, there are many uh, core of head if you calling a Rust function from JavaScript. So uh, I will talk about it later. And the second one is trusting. Um, and the final, final one is debugging. Let's start from the uh, cross-boundary core of head. Um, Contrary to, make, to making complex tasks, this table shows uh, making a Rust to do a simple calculations and wrapping them with different Rust NAPI uh, frameworks, then comparing them to pure JavaScript with the performance. You can see that in the uh, simple computation, JavaScript, JavaScript can be several uh, tens to hundreds of t times faster than Rust. Uh, but why, why, uh, why is the case? Hell, uh, shouldn't Rust be much faster than JavaScript? Actually, um, it, it was um, cross-boundary curve head I mentioned about. Um, cross-boundary uh, curve head refers to the performance cost uh, occurs when making function calls between different binaries and uh, languages. In the case of Node.js and Rust add-ons, they, um, they are compiled to separate binaries. You know, Node.js is a single uh, executable binaries, and your add-ons is another uh, dynamic linked library. Um, so traditional native language compiler optimization technologies uh, technologies such as LTO and PGO uh, and such things do not work when, when making a cross-binary uh, function course. Uh, secondly, uh, the, the core cross the, uh, the function core cross the JavaScript engine. So there is a lot of additional work to make uh, to, to be done during the core. Uh, resulting in more performance overhead. As we can see in the sum function uh, in the right section, uh, in, in addition to the necessary A plus B operation, there are five additional uh, node API calls compared to the uh, pure JavaScript implementation, which are used to uh, handle you know, uh, type, type converse, conversion and the different uh, for, for the different runtime and the language. And the cross boundary calls uh, also uh, cause another issues. In, the, in this example, the uh, pure JavaScript implementation has the opportunity to be uh, deeply optimized by the uh, JavaScript engine like V8. Uh, but uh, however, in the uh, implementation on the right, 
the uh, inserted uh, native add-on function may cause the entire um, sum hold pass function to be abandoned by the engine for optimization. So um, this is this will uh, introduce more overhead here. And the uh, second trade-off is trusting. Um, there, are, uh, there have been more and more uh, news about uh, attackers using NPM to distribute their, uh, uh, their, mal uh, their, their codes to steal uh, secrets from developers and uh, users. So uh, using NPRS or another uh, or the other native language to uh, uh, publish native add-ons to NPM will uh, increase the uh, uh, will ex ex exacerbate this issue, as the uh, released binary cannot be effectively uh, added by the uh, tools like um, and um, however this situation has recently improved as the uh, NPM officially re released the profaneness uh, feature for sign published NPM packages preventing them to, uh, from being tempered with du during the publishing uh, Process. Okay, the um, the third uh, overhead hell is uh, the debugging. In order to reduce installation size, most uh, most NAPRS packages are uh, um, just uh, drop their debug symbols during the release, and the screenshot hell is from the uh, issues on the official RSPAC repo, which shows that when 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 issue or panic happens, um, the error stack cannot be displayed at all because the uh, debug symbols were was re removed during the during the uh, publish, uh, making it much more uh, difficult to locate and fix the problem on the developer side. Uh, to solve this problem, uh, NPRs will provide a debug, debug symbols download feature in the uh, next major release to uh, reduce this problem. Um, and, and if you want, um, well, uh, and you can re-download the uh, removed debug symbols again if the uh, panic happened. On, on the developer machine. Okay, uh, so conclusion is an NPS is very easy to use and provides an end-to-end -end solution from development and deployment. Uh, and NPS can improve Node.js perform, uh, performance progressively and uh, not all scenarios are suitable for uh, developing with NPS and Rust. Uh, so that's all. Thanks. Any questions? Any questions? Is is it 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 depends uh, because um even um you know I have written thousands of NPRS libraries but I can't give an answer that that which parts of your application can be written be rewritten by Rust because it need to be provided and and as you as you can see uh, the the Rust codes may, uh, uh, for example, 10 times faster by JavaScript compared with JavaScript, but it could introduce more overhead 
like uh, de-optimize your uh, your JIT in 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 Node.js or some other of of that we can't see uh, in pure JavaScript application. So the only way to uh, to do that is re rewrite re uh, small pieces, which uh, introduce uh, less uh, core of head like like less uh, Node API calls and 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 profile it progressively and see if we can get a better result of performance. Can you give an example of how you would do that? Your Navi package is significantly faster than your Node.js application. Yes, maybe RSpec is a great example. RSpec is a library which have has the same API with Webpack. It has the same API and the same uh, configuration and the same features, but it's ten or twenty times faster than Webpack. In boundary, yeah. And it is not yet. Yeah. <laughs> I heard it was five to ten times. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> it depends on projects. Okay. Yeah. If you are using like uh, less loaders and 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 if you are mm, using more JavaScript written loaders and the plugins, it will be more slower. But if you are using the uh, building functions like TS Transpile or CSS Transpile, it will be much more faster. Is the AFLAN backend written in Rust? Uh, we don't have a backend server right now, but we have a universal uh, infrastructure for cooperative and, and real-time cooperative. And it's written by Rust, and and in our uh, election client, part of part of the uh, data persist layer is rewriting by uh, Rust and NPRS to uh, replace the JavaScript version. Yeah. I'm curious um, if you if you want to use Rust, how much backend do you Yeah. It, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, we have tried to build our like business codes on Rust before, like uh, uh, CRUD uh, business code, and it's really um, non-productive for engineers because it has a very complex. Um, Type system and borrow check, and we can't ship our features before it change. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So in most cases, I I think Node.js and JavaScript and and is is more suitable uh, for this business. But uh, in other scenario uh, like like AI, like um, uh, our our uh, Business model like like uh, cooperative and and real time for real time uh, performance sensitive scenario. Uh, we need to uh, replace the part of Node.js application with the Rust. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> Can you share? Yeah, yeah. Hey, okay, yeah, I have some swag. <laughs> 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 okay, see that uh, your NDRS, we're going to do some preview for the matrix of the yeah. uh, supported OS and architecture, right? Yeah. So, what will happen if the user is using some new architecture that you don't have? Uh, what will happen? You, you can still pre. Uh, you can still compile your own binary if you want. It's not a conflict with the pre-compiled version. That's the post-install script? 
Um, yeah. <laughs> But, but for uh, the mainstream uh, OS and platform, it's, it's not necessary. Yeah. yeah. OK. Zig uh, yeah. uh, from 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 uh, from from my knowledge, Zig is a fancy C. Uh, is it, it need to manage your own memory by hand? So if you if you go into the uh, bound JS issues, you can see many, uh, a lot of uh, segmentation faults and, and panic issues here because of this. But Rust is different. Uh, it has borrow checking, and it will um, manage your memory automatically. So it's more memory safe uh, in this way. And I think it's more uh, mm, Convenient and and trustable for the infrastructure. Yeah. Okay, I think. Awesome. Yes. One more round of applause for uh, Brooklyn. Thank you.